Hey folks, so the other day I was uh, building up a from scratch belt uh, IAFRD tri bike, and um, you know, it's basically all um, customer supplied DI2 components. And you know, as I got to working on it, I noticed you know, laying everything out here, I noticed that the shifters were the uh, just the one button style and this was the first time I'd ever actually dealt with this system you know I've done hundreds of DI2 builds and such so um, just a few little tips and things that I learned along the way it's the uh, the R9160 uh, Durace shifters there and so this was the first time I'd ever actually had my hands on some of these um, you know, pulled them out and such, and, you know, looked at the directions, and really they're pretty vague. There's not much, you know, basically just kind of gives you some really, you know, several different languages of kind of the essentials of how they function, you know, this makes it harder, easier, so basically there's one button on each shifter is the gist of it, and one button goes up, shifts it up, one button shifts it down, and then the brake levers each had one button as well, so... Um, you know, had to kind of go through and figure out, um, you know, how it all was going to work and, you know, actually how these shifters, you know, I couldn't tell if they come apart and you have, you know, typically most of the brake levers and shifters are just a little five millimeter bolt that tightens up, but <clears throat> upon doing a little research, that piece there just, you know, that's for your threaded section and then there's a little flat, um, there on the right side it's got two little you know pieces that engage into the back piece there and you know as you tighten there's two flats it's 23 millimeters you'll need like a 23 millimeter cone wrench or spanner wrench or whatnot and you know as you turn that clockwise it'll just expand the little silver pieces and that's what fixes it into your um you know or your extension bar there so and then your e-wire just plugs right into the center of that piece there so um you know one thing this is you know there's it's left and right mark there uh, if you look carefully so you want to verify that before you start putting these in if you're um, looking at installing a set of these but you know one thing um I don't know, I'm not trying to call any triathletes out or anything, but they're probably, as far as folks that ride bikes and such, probably the worst as far as doing a lot of cross-chaining. And, you know, it seems kind of funny, you know, they'll spend $600 on a, you know, set of ceramic speed pulleys for a Durace rear derailleur, and then the thing's cross-chained all the time, you know, in the big, big combination, and, you know, that's the way that chain sitting sideways like that is definitely going to probably kill any extra wattage you get from the free spinning of those, um, you know, the pulleys there. So I can see this whole system, the synchro shifting system, which it's basically just, if you look at point A to point B of your hardest to easiest, you just push the button up or down and it automatically will shift into the big ring for you. Um, so anyway, just laying it all out here, and I kind of, this is before I did any, you know, updated the firmware, did anything, and just didn't charge it or anything. I just wanted to check the system, so um, this is what a, a lot of times that I'll do on, you know, if the parts are all supplied from the customer, and I don't know what the sources or anything about them, I'll usually just plug everything up here on the bench and test it and see if it's, uh, you know, everything works or not and you can see as I plug this final piece and you can see gave me two quick blinks there of the of the red light which is an indicator that there's not much battery life left so I just started kind of playing around with it here to see see how it worked and um, you know and I've got got a few shifts and then the battery finally just fully died but you can see the you know it's working that rear derailleur but um, you know, upon, you know, at this point, I went ahead and, you know, I've got my little uh, battery charger. If you've never charged one of these systems, there's a little side port there that the little battery charger plugs into. Um, and then, 
you know, so I got that, got that going, decided to charge it, and then I would check the, uh, it's always a good idea to check your firmware, uh, this is, that's the little, you know, battery charger, the orange light stays on, it goes off, you're charged, so that's the old, the, the PCE1, that's their, the little firmware updater tool, which I'll put a link if you, it's a pretty expensive little tool, this is a wired version, you know, just plugs into, really, you can check any individual component. Uh, you know, and that portion just plugs into your um, your computer. But you'll want to download the their, the free eTube software, which there's, you know, Mac or PC versions. And then if you have the uh, little uh, D-Fly piece, you can actually use, a, you know, iPad or your Apple or... Uh, you know, you could use your phone or whatnot, Android and such, and you can, you know, do any of the, uh, um, I don't know, mod gear modifications. You can check so many things, uh, uh, firmware updates. You can, you know, as far as when you're in the synchro mode, you can decide when what gears and where it's going to shift and everything else. But it's... That's a lot to get into. I'll put a couple links uh, here at the in the description of the video of some some more if you're you know curious about all this, give you some more info on it. Um, but what I did basically at this point, I updated the firmware and I changed the. There's basically three modes that any of the current Di2 uh, eWire systems use, which is manual. You got your sync, semi-synchro, and then your full synchro. Which with these one button shifters, you have to, it's really the only way to use it's going to be full synchro, which is just you just push one side to go you know up and one side to go down, and it will automatically choose your gear for you, and it won't cross chain. The way you'll switch between the different modes is you just you got your function button there, you just double tap it, and it'll you'll see the green and red light blinking once as manual, twice as your first synchro mode and then three times is your is the full synchro the two two blinks is semi synchro but um, anyway so just routing this thing up into the uh, little tube here and um, basically just want to cinch that down to I believe 1.5 newton meters is what the little Shimano manual calls for and you know one thing I I'm just making this a prediction here. I guarantee you within the next few years, you're going to see like a fully automatic system. I mean, they're already integrated into your garments and such, and it'll tell you what gear gear ratios you're in, things like that. But I predict in a few years, it's going there will be a fully automatic system that can integrate between, you know, cadence and even your power meter, and it, it will just shift automatically for you depending on all of those factors and can be customized I mean these are pretty customizable that you know I've started in the very lowest gear here just a little demonstration and I'm just going down and you'll see as it gets to the point when you're getting close to the small small it actually you'll see it jump up a couple gears go to the big ring and then you can keep continue going further further down to your higher end gears there so um, anyway, yeah, I'll put lots of links here in the description. Um, that's basically it. You know, built up nice little sweet little bike. And um, uh, yeah, it's I learned a couple things because this was the first one I've actually ever done of this style. So anyway, hopefully you found the video helpful. Um, feel free to comment or ask questions. Subscribe. And um, yeah. If you're not a subscriber already, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching.